Oh, there she is. I cannot believe you bought that thing. Dark in here. Oh, hey, there we go. Uh, well, hey, y'all, welcome back to Doug's Cars. Um, so, yeah, that's right, I bought her. <laughs> This is a 2003 Lincoln Town Car Signature. Let's take a look. Yes, I had a BMW M4, and yes, this car is uh, come along afterwards, so in some way, shape, or form is replacing it. Why on earth did I do this? Well, look at it, it's, it's, it's 20 feet of magnificence. I actually drove this car a couple months back. I'll link to that video up here, and you can see my initial thoughts on it. And it came up for sale, some, uh, very dear family friends of mine were selling this off and I, I had to jump at the chance. I mean, it's, it's fantastic. It's in this mushroom color. I think we decided we were going to call this mushroom. It's like a grayish, brownish. I know we were kind of not sure what it was. So uh, anyway, let's get y'all mounted up and we'll take a quick drive. So why a Lincoln Town car when you drove a BMW M4? This channel has definitely been influenced by places like Hoobie's Garage, Tyler Hoover. Uh, I, I can't deny that. You know, I, I bought a BMW from him in the past and we have similar tastes in cars. And, you know, I've always wanted a Panther platform vehicle. Um, Good friend in high school had a then fairly new Grand Marquis, top of the line. Uh, you know, we hooned about in that in high school. It was glorious, always fun. And then I was just talking with my dad last night about this. Uh, in 2003 or four, when the Mercury Marauder came out, which was the, uh, the the high performance version of the Mercury Grand Marquis, which is the sister to this car, along with the Crown Victoria, Ford Crown Victoria, which you probably know is a cop car or a taxi. That was like the Impala SS from 1996. It was the high performance version with just the more powerful engine and blacked out trim and all that. And we went and looked at one because I really wanted one. And the dealer wanted a bub sticker for the car and the car already had a thousand miles on it. And so that was just not, I mean, we, we just got out of there as quick as we could. We just bounced because there was, there was no way I was gonna spend over sticker for a car that first of all, wasn't in short supply they didn't end up selling that well anyway, unfortunately, because it was a pretty cool car. But I have a feeling that the dealership probably didn't help sell these cars. So fast forward all these years, 15 plus years, and I happen to have the ability to purchase this car. Now, a couple years ago, my day job office was in an area where there was a small dealer around the corner that sold a bunch of off-fleet Crown Victorias, like former police cars. And they'd be sitting out front with the spotlight and everything here for like 4,000 bucks. And I drive past every day and go, I really should, but you know, I just, you know, maybe, maybe next time. And I just never got one. And those are getting really hard to find. Like there are not off fleet town car, um, Crown Victorias anymore. Uh, police departments aren't using them anymore. So because of that, the ones that you can find are all ragged out. And you know, I don't want a beater. I want one that's pretty nice. The good thing about town cars is most of them are owned by older folks who took care of them and uh, didn't take them on police chases. <laughs> so it's the same car. It's just a little nicer inside, right? Same chassis, same engine, everything. Well, after I videoed this car and its stable mate, the Lincoln Mark LT pickup, the family reached out to me and said that they were interested in selling the car and would I be interested in buying it? And uh, I said, of course, um, it's a one owner from new car, garage kept all the time and dealer maintained. There is a stack of receipts in this glove box and this thick, I'm not kidding. And that's just for regular service because these things don't break. They're very, very reliable cars. So I jumped at the chance, uh, I helped them out. They can, they're trying to uh, get a different vehicle and this is going to be something that I'm going to enjoy for a while. Uh, I just took a very long trip down to Florida and back in my Land Rover Discovery 3 and that drinks premium at like 12 miles per gallon. This would have been a much more comfortable way to waft down there, get much better mileage. These things get in the mid-20s on the highway. But uh, 
I took that. Now, next time I go to Florida, this is the perfect car for it. I'll blend right in because people still have them there. So back to Tyler Hoover. Uh, when I went to pick up that M3, he picked me up in his Rolls Royce Phantom, the purple one that he sold fairly recently. Well, I take that back. Watch JR go was driving the Phantom. Tyler was in the back seat with the tray table down, eating a burrito from Taco Bell when I opened the door to get in the back. And so we drove over to his house. Again, I, I bought a, a, an E36 M3 convertible from him. And, you know, I, it was winter time. I had to drive it back to Virginia from Wichita, which is quite a long drive. And so I was just kind of hoping that everything would be good in the car to drive it. The other stuff, you know, okay, the air conditioning doesn't work. It's February, whatever, that kind of stuff. So we get there and then JR pops out of the car. And his first thing he says is, does the cruise control work? And in my mind, that's the last thing I'd be worried about. And, the, and Tyler says, oh yeah, the cruise is great. I was like, hey, you know, I, does the car run, you know, kind of thing, which I knew it did, but like that was more important to me than the cruise control. But, and I, I have a point, I promise, the fact that it worked made total sense to me a couple days later when I left Wichita and drove it home. And I had, you know, 200 miles of nothing between Wichita and St. Louis, set the cruise on 80 and yeah, I mean, I live on the East Coast. I-95 is like five miles east of my house. There is no way you can use cruise control on I-95. It's just not gonna work. Uh, you, you would be wrecked because it's too busy and there's too much traffic. It's just not something that's possible. So I didn't even think about that, but to them, that made a lot of sense. That's where this car comes in. Like I said, I had a point. It just took me a while to get to it this car wafts you about to use a hubnut phrase he was just talking about his how much he missed the australian ford fairmont he had in one of his recent videos and that's the australian version of this car a big rear wheel drive sedan that wafts you about and i've always wanted one of these as i said and this is the perfect car for middle america driving on the interstate hundreds of miles nothing to see nothing to do just turn on the Alpine tape deck, set the air conditioning just so, turn on the heated seat if you need to and drive. And you know, those guys had the right idea with the cruise control thing. I just didn't think of it that way because of where I live. This is the perfect road trip car and that's what this is for. Uh, the, the, the Land Rover drove great air suspension and all, but it's just terrible on gas. It's, it's, it's noisier because it's built like, it looks like a Volvo, right? It's square. This is fairly aerodynamic for its size and quiet and comfy. And th these seats are not designed to take you around the Nürburgring at high speed. They're designed to feel like you are sitting on your living room sofa. Um, and that's what you want when you have hundreds of miles to cover. You know, so I, I had to jump on the chance to get this car. And I'm just absolutely enjoying it. Uh, the, the son of the family that was selling the car had it for the last week and was driving it to work. And when I went to pick it up from him, he, he had a big grin on. He's like, I get it. Like, I know why you want this because it's just so, it's like I get to work every day like refreshed and happy because it's so comfortable. It's so easy to drive. You know, like the, the pressures of the modern world are washed away because you're not on super hard sport suspension. And you've got these super cushy seats in this big leather armrest. And, you know, the, the, there's a few of these type of cars that are still available. Some of the big Buicks with the 3800 V6 are great bargains. Great first cars. They're safe. They're comfortable. You can put all your friends in, but you are not cool. That's the thing. So I'm bringing this back because I'm obviously super cool. I've got a YouTube channel. So this is now cool big cars are back i've got my buddy with the the buick roadmaster estate wagon that thing gets looks everywhere it goes and when you're a somewhat younger guy driving one of these and you get out people turn and look because you're cool plus you know the trunk is massive and i mean i could haul a family around in there if i needed to just you know for extra uber money ah uber that would be i mean these were basically limousines they're you know, livery cars and of course made into limousines hmm I just have to paint it black so it looks the part. I've been loving driving this thing around. Uh, it's just comfortable. And you don't have to be 80 to enjoy a comfortable car. And no one really makes them anymore. 
maybe like a Lincoln Navigator or Escalade, but those things have tires that are this thick nowadays, and you know they're just not going to be as cushy on the road. So the 239 horsepower V8 up front, not 240, 239. That's plenty of power for what you need to do. She'll move. This is the final design of the Panther platform, de debuted in 2003. So it's got upgraded steering, upgraded suspension, a Watts linkage in the rear axle because it is a live rear axle to hold that in place. So, you know, it doesn't corner badly. It's got four wheel disc brakes with anti-lock, of course, because it's a modern car. It stops pretty well for its size. And, you know, it, it's just large, but so are pickup trucks and Suburbans and Tahoes and things. So, you know, I, I don't feel that that's a hindrance. So all that to say, yes, I bought her. And all you people who say, I can't believe you bought that thing. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, look for some more shenanigans in this car because I'm going to enjoy this for a while. So please hit subscribe and I will see you all soon. Thanks so much for watching Doug's Cars.